Hi, I'm Leah Cuddy back with the Hill Country Alliance. And today I'm here with Don Davies, HCA's Night Sky Program Manager at Blue Hole Regional Park in Wimberley. And we're here to answer some of your most burning eclipse questions. So Don, yes. next month, there's a total solar eclipse happening in the Hill Country. Mm -hmm. You might've heard, Thanks you so. might've told a few people. Just a few. Um, but I'm curious, can you tell me more about what a total solar eclipse is and why it's so special? Sure. So a total solar eclipse occurs when the moon is situated between the Earth and the sun, just right, so that the moon completely covers the sun in what's referred to as totality. This isn't rare. A total solar eclipse occurs somewhere on the planet approximately every 18 months. But what is rare and unique is for a lot of us folks here to live where we don't need to travel to see one. Okay, so a total solar eclipse sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. It's really special that it's happening here in the Hill Country, although maybe it's not that rare. What makes a total solar eclipse different from a different eclipse, like the annular one we just had in the fall? Great question. So the eclipse type is based on a lot of different variables. Most importantly, where the moon is and its distance from the Earth. So as the moon orbits our planet, the moon moves sometimes further away from us, sometimes closer. So when it's further away from us, it actually appears smaller on the surface of the sun, and that forms an annular eclipse or a ring of fire. For this upcoming eclipse next month, the moon is closer to us, so it completely obscures the sun, which makes it a total solar eclipse. So we won't see the sun at all during totality? No, not at all. We'll see the corona, the outer sort of atmosphere, but we will not see the sun. And that's why it's important to take your solar glasses off. Okay, Dawn. So during the eclipse, mm -hmm. Where do I need to be? I know that it's crossing a huge chunk of the United States and Mexico. I know that it's gonna come through the hill country mm -hmm. and across Texas, but where should I be to see the solar eclipse? So with any eclipse, you want to be on the path of the eclipse. And in this case, it's called the path of totality. That path is about 170 miles wide and stretches all the way from Mexico to Maine into Nova Scotia. That path has very clear lines. You wanna be within that path to observe totality. And the closer you are to the center line, the longer that period of totality is going to be. Being outside of that path on either side will not give you 100% totality. And that's very important. Okay, and if you're not in 100% totality, you need to keep your solar glasses on the whole time. The whole time. It will just be seen as a partial eclipse. Okay. Cool, so you ideally would wanna be somewhere in the line of totality, somewhere in the hill country because it's the best. Mm -hmm and ideally in a place where you're surrounded by people you enjoy being around. Absolutely, it's great to be in an environment where you're with others because everybody's experience being in totality is truly unique and individual. And you're gonna see a lot of really great responses to the entire experience. Walk me through what happens on the day of the eclipse. It's not gonna happen all at once, right? No, not at all. So a total solar eclipse takes about a little more than two and a half hours from start to finish. In the time between the beginning, what we call first contact, and second contact, when totality begins, is when we get to see a lot of really interesting things happen around us and we get to feel it. It's a very sensory experience. So the light starts to diminish, shadows become sharp. Uh, we start actually hearing more of our nocturnal animals. So you might start hearing more crickets or more frogs while other daytime animals, diurnal animals, like birds, will stop chirping. We expect the temperature to drop anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees. And as we reach totality, we'll begin to see an entire 360 degree sunset around us. That sounds incredible. It's beautiful. So as the eclipse is happening, we've kind of got a few hours until we reach that totality mark. Mm -hmm. And during those few hours, you need to wear solar glasses? Yes. So at no point in time outside of totality should you have your solar glasses off. The brightness of our sun is the equivalent of a million full moons. And even the slightest bit of brightness can be damaging. So leading up to totality and following totality, you want to keep your solar glasses on at all times if you're looking at the sun. Okay, so you treat it just like the sun on any other day. You don't exactly. stare at the sun on a random Tuesday. Exactly. But on Monday, April 8th, you can stare at the sun through your solar glasses. Yes. Okay. When you're observing totality and you've taken off your solar glasses, like what do you see? So during totality, it's going to be a very dark environment. Not completely dark as at nighttime, but think late dusk. 
we are going to see the corona, so the outer atmosphere of the sun. We most likely will see some of our bright planets, and there's possibly a chance to see a comet in the sky at that time. That's crazy. So Dawn, yes. show me what you've got over here. There's like a solar telescope. Okay, <laughs> and what are these things? like? Absolutely, so first off, you never wanna be without your solar glasses. Uh, or if you don't like having things on your face, you can buy solar cards as well. Big thing is just to keep these on you at all time. I actually recommend hole punching them and putting them on a lanyard around your neck so they're exactly where they need to be for the eclipse. The other tools that we have are ways to just observe the eclipse indirectly. Is that a colander? It is a pasta colander, yes. So anything with any kind of hole, regardless of whether it's round or in this case, triangular or square, will cast a circular image on the ground of the sun. And as we get closer to totality, those circles will become crescents. So you can use a pasta colander, a slotted spoon, even the breaks between leaves and trees will cast these crescents on the ground. And so, then this is just one type of telescopic equipment you can use. This is a dedicated solar scope, so it has safe filters built into it that allow us to observe the sun. Um, other options are filters for binoculars. But what's really important is both of these types of devices magnify images. So you always wanna make sure that you have required safe certified solar devices filters on these devices or anything else you're looking through like your camera or your cell phone because without those you can do serious damage to not only your equipment but also your eyes good to know wow that is so helpful thank you for teaching me all of this where can i go to learn more about this online do you have any resources to share absolutely so a lot of resources and available information is on our eclipse portal on the hill country alliance website uh, we also have a store where you can buy your own HCA Eclipse glasses. We have recordings of past presentations, um, information on our partners, and a calendar of events, various types of Eclipse-related activities going on both before the Eclipse and during the Eclipse. That's awesome. I will check it out. And that's at hillcountryalliance.org slash Eclipse.